all those relevant stations because I've got this vast <laughs> outstanding audience here and I just want to make sure you look very succinct. Yes, ma'am. But uh, uh, you're not copying me now, but uh, it looks succinct, but it works. Yes, ma'am, it does. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is all I need. <laughs>
along with Alabama, Mississippi, Tech, uh, South Carolina, Georgia, over and over again. We were at a plateau at the beginning of the summer, and we have now surged, and they believe the surge is going to be even more extensive. Labor Day weekend, but remember, adults who are not vaccinated are giving it to each other and giving it to children. How do you think children go home and come back and they are positive? And so I'm delighted to be here at the Northeast Command Station on Lay Road, a very vital part of Northeast Houston. Along with these officers, I thank you to Commander Dale, I hope I'm calling him by his appropriate title. Yes, you are. You can uh, tell me whether it's general or whether it's the, the chief, the chief of chief. But what a wonderful expression for this command station, which I've always known over the years. They've got a better looking building here, but on city council, I've known them for a very long time. Dr. Beal, just come quickly, don't have tiptoe. Um, that they open up their doors as true community citizens for us to get vaccinated. And one person said they heard on the radio. So I know one person heard on the radio because I really worked to get this word out. Whole bunches that are sitting home somewhere and not coming to get vaccinated. What more can we do? So I wanna thank you, Commander. Thank your officers. Thank you for this, uh, I call it community relationships. Uh, that have been established uh, from Chief Finner. I saw him just a while back. Thank him for giving his officers the kind of encouragement that we can see each other as family, as part of the community. So we've got some tough fights from pandemics to proliferation of guns and to gun violence. But I'm always a person that believes uh, that we can get to the end of the road in a good way. We can get to a rainbow. But we are not doing that if we have all of our fellow citizens where we are just throwing vaccines toward you. Be mindful that who is coming in you. We have not determined what kind of difficulty we'll have with who. All the Latin names. The Delta, now who, now the move. And for people who want to grunt and say, you get it anyway if you're vaccinated, if you're vaccinated, you live. I have living proof of that. I'm dealing with people in hospitals that are coming out of the ventilator if they had some underlying condition, Dr. Barone, because they were vaccinated. So Commander, you usually have to be the person that kind of talks a little sternly to the person who <laughs> run a light or have been in the wrong place at the wrong time. I know you believe in redemption, and I hope that some of these that you catch on the streets, uh, knowing my attitude, Pastor Morrison, about helping young people steer in the right direction, so I hope the officers here will talk to those who can be saved, and everybody doesn't have to go downtown. But at this point in time, I'm taking a different perspective. I will be seeking to determine whether or not legislation should be put in place. The president is trying, but we're not getting through to people, and people are dying, and the numbers are high. Uh, we're, we're having 150,000 plus persons a day who are infected with uh, this disease, and the children across the nation exceed $250,000. It is 250,000 children and teens are suffering from the coronavirus virus, the largest number for the first time since the start of the pandemic uh, in the week through September 2nd. Our hospitals in Houston are near capacity as the Delta variant spreads. And this is the beginning of this week. Um, we're still at a nursing shortage still don't have enough nurses. I spoke just a few minutes ago or hour ago to the Texas Human Health and Services. Health and Human Services, they don't have enough, we don't have enough military teams to be out. 
So we're stretching ourselves to a point. And, and let us take a moment to thank those first responders inside the hospital. Let's thank our UNMC our medical team over here, because they've been out there. <laughs>
They're resilient, but can you imagine? The children that lose both parents to COVID and now are transplanted to aunts and uncles, thank God for them. But both parents are gone. There are story after story about that. So the federal government is going to have to step in and make the difference. And I believe that there's going to have to be mandates where there is a surge. Let me start first uh, with our commander and thank him for uh, allowing us to be here. Uh, if you would come and, um, and then we will proceed with those who are here with us and we're so appreciative with to proceed with acknowledging them as well. Commander, thank you. Thank you. Let me give you an example. 
Two weeks ago, I admitted the same day a 95-year-old African-American woman and a 27-year-old Hispanic young man. They both came to me. I was able to discharge successfully the 95-year-old woman three days ago. And yesterday, I lost the 27-year-old man. What was the difference between these two? The 27-year-old man was healthy, but was unvaccinated. Mm. The 95-year-old woman was vaccinated. Mm. But mm. things work. Whether or not we want to push people together, that's a different story. But for God's sake, do what's right. Yeah. Get the vaccine. The vaccine works. Forget about what people say, that they're going to grow and survive, or they're going to grow and say. That's not going to happen. Right now, that's going to save your life. So more than talking about numbers, I can talk to women. Giving them a real case is the best thing we, we can do. We, as clinicians, were exhausted. You have mentioned, we have, you know, the resources that we have are limited. Our nurses are, are tired for us too. We need all the help we can get. The system is collapsing, and it's going to get worse if we don't do it right. And one easy way to do it is get the support that we are asking for, and the same goes get people vaccinated. Now, let me just say quickly in Spanish for those uh, Spanish stations. Estamos aquí con la congresista Sheila Jackson Lee. Eh, que ha estado trabajando intensamente por 538 días haciendo esto. Las vacunas funcionan. Yo he visto mucha gente que fallece que no ha sido vacunada. Tenemos ahorita demasiado exceso de trabajo dentro de, las, eh, de los hospitales y lo único que podemos hacer para salir adelante es que todos trabajemos juntos. Yo les recomiendo que se vacunen. Gracias. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Um, UMC has been working to the bone, and I just want to announce publicly today uh, that you are getting through the federal process and the state HHS, seven nurses and four respiratory therapists will be coming. We need a lifeline to them. They have not arrived yet, but you will be getting them, and I will be assured that you will be getting them into your facility. Uh, Dr. Dennis Beal is a child psychologist. She's been working with us. Uh, she has a brief moment on this impact on our children. Dr. Thank you, Congresswoman. Um, you know, often as, as a clinician, um, a child and adolescent specializing in children and adolescents, we often think that our children are not really suffering. Uh, they really are, you know, not really paying attention. This pandemic has had a devastating effect on our kids. So as they were approaching getting ready for school, there was a lot of anxiety and there was a lot of fear and apprehension about how they were going to go back into the classroom and be able to learn, and they were excited. But in the same in the same instance, there was fear about whether or not they'll be able to continue throughout the school year. I heard from many children who called in from hotlines and different sessions that we had how fearful they were because their family members were infected by the virus. They didn't know what to do or how to, if it was going to affect them as, as well. And back then we were saying we weren't really focusing on children, but we know from the numbers that our children and adolescents are affected. So emotionally, they're trying to go back to school and learn, knowing it may not be for the entire year, it may be a temporary process, and they're fearful about what will happen when they come home. Can you imagine if one person loses, like the Congresswoman talked about both of her parents, if you lose one parent, just devastating. Two parents just totally wipes you out. And we're expecting them to be able to learn at the same time. They've had grandparents, I had one child that called on a hotline that calls every other day because so many family members were affected by the virus. Mm -hmm. So if we're here to educate and teach our children, why don't we protect them at the same time? That means having them know that they're going to be okay because we're their protectors. But that means we also have to be vaccinated to be yeah. able to protect them. And if parents, if you don't do it for anything else, do it for your kids. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do it for them. Don't leave them here. Very, very important for whatever reason that the kids decided not to be vaccinated. You know, we know that 12 and under, but the 12 and above. I'm talking to adolescents, and they're telling me, seeing the stories that don't make sense because they've heard the erroneous information from somebody else, and the information was not correct. It is important that we understand why it's important to be vaccinated, and that we want to be able to give them a sense of security. They have enough that they're trying to do. They're trying to get educated. They're trying to understand emotionally, they're suffering from depression and anxiety. The numbers are extremely high, and we don't have enough people in order to serve them and 
give them a safe, a safe space. So we're trying to create programs to be able to help them understand and cope with what's going on in this pandemic. So please, please, if I can say anything else to you, understand why it's important to get vaccinated, not only for yourself, but your family and for your children. And Congresswoman, I'm committed. We have a new program called Wellbeing in Color for Children of Color that we're working in order to be able to deal with the COVID before to cope with the rest of the pandemic. And it's of no charge to anybody. So if someone wants to know, just give us a call and we'll be out here for you. Children are frightened. Uh, and comforters are Dr. Beal and our pastors. Pastor Morrison, would you come introduce uh, so that you can be heard before the gentleman has to go? Um, I have been working with these Northeast pastors. You remember when we opened up Forest Brook and that was on testing. Um, we fought for that and then we opened up vaccinations. And so we're in an area that is not where we'd like it to be in getting vaccinated. So Pastor Morrison, we thank you so very much. Uh, Pastor uh, M.D. Morrison, New Faith. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Congresswoman. And I want to applaud you again for all of your tireless work uh, as you stated, I'm president of Venice Coalition of Harris County in the vicinity. With me also is Pastor Willie Claiborne Jr. of the Greater Shallow Tabernacle Church, Pastor Eric Wilson, Spring Antioch, Pastor Louis Sidney, Greater St. Paul, Pastor Darren Payne, Cathedral of Faith. We've come to make an appeal to the spiritual nature of mankind. For many, excuses have been, it's not federally approved. And we just received that last week or some days before that uh, now the vaccination is FDA approved. Many say, well, there's a distrust and I have a religious issue with this vaccine. As those of us who strive in the word of God, it is morally wrong to have the capacity to do right by your fellow man. And as the Bible says, shut up your bowels of compassion. It is morally wrong to do that. The proverbial writer said that a man that does not have rule over his own spirit is like a city that is torn down and without walls. Our nation finds itself now without walls, without protection. It seems as though the very fabric of our nation is falling apart. And it is because we are not taking responsibility to do right by our fellow man. Every Saturday, I'm in a funeral, as Pastor Wilson will further elaborate on. I'm in the hospital. Very recent case of one of my members in the hospital, and I'm so glad for the assistance of Congresswoman Lee. The family was unable to go in and see her. Her husband, of over 50 years, uh, she was on a ventilator. But because of the assistance of the Congresswoman, the family was able to go see her, and the last we heard, she was able to get off the ventilator, and uh, she's slowly recovering. But that lady had a vaccination. She was vaccinated. This, this is unheard of, and this is ungodly. We have to get back to the place where we value life again. Money should not be the driving force for us to get vaccinated. Mm -hmm. Amen. That is a shame. Mm -hmm. That is a shame. The love I have for my fellow man should be more than enough to get me vaccinated. It is time that we stop this. It is time, it is time that we value morals over money. That we, that we value love over luxury. It's time now that we just love one another again. Thank you, Congresswoman, for what you're doing. in the number one 13 to 18 states with a million cases. We have not been able to bring that number down. Uh, we have not penetrated. Uh, about a couple of weeks ago, we were about five million in the state of Texas not vaccinated, but it spreads. And the only thing that Governor Abbott has asked for from the federal government 
is five mortuary trucks to carry the dead. Five mortuary trucks. FEMA has given us five mortuary trucks. We need military teams. We need more nurses because the hospitals are having to go in an open market and they can't pay the amount uh, that is in the open market. They're paying enormous. And that's why I'm glad to announce the seven nurses that are coming to UMCC and their two respiratory technicians. But five mortuary trucks is what has been requested by the state of Texas. We should be requesting nursing teams. But what is happening is that people are going in, uh, and as Pastor Morrison said, families can't see them. And don't get a bad impression when you say that someone's in the hospital. They could be in for a variety of reasons, underlying conditions. But they're coming out where those without vaccination, you heard what Dr. Rome said. What an amazing story. 95 years old and 20-something years old. 95-year-old is home with her family. Pastor Wilson. Thank you, Congressman Lee. I am, I am Reverend Eric Wilson. I am the pastor of the Spring Antioch Baptist Church. I'm a member of the Northeast Coalition of Ministers. I'm also a a, uh, the assistant manager of the Pruitt's funeral home here in Houston. And um, I, I think we really should give Congresswoman Lee another hand clap of encouragement <laughs> for her tireless work in, in so many of our issues, but certainly in this particular issue that we're, we're talking about right now. I, I, don't, I don't want to be redundant because a lot has been said that, that, that I don't want to say again. But I, want, I think y'all to know from the funeral industry's perspective, right now we are essentially saturated with new cases. It's hard for us to even keep up with the amount of calls we're getting every day that are a direct result of this pandemic. So again, I don't want to be redundant with that because we keep hearing at home. What I would like to say is that what we're observing in our industry is the emotional impact this is having on everybody. I mean, it is literally the, the residual uh, effect of this pandemic is such that not only are lives being lost, but lives have been altered forever just because of the nature of the deaths and what families have to go through before they get there. I would encourage you all, again, to get vaccinated, get tested to get vaccinated, uh, we just did a testing at our church this past weekend because we want to do our part as a church to always keep up with what's going on and be a contributing factor. But uh, 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 Congresswoman, Congresswoman Jackson Lee is a tireless participant and leader. I think if we just keep her out front, everything will be all right. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any questions? that have been given to you uh, to no, answer. No, uh, then, then let me conclude if you haven't turned off, so let me just conclude. Um, and we will continue because I want uh, the community leaders to speak as well. But just on this moment, let me just conclude. We're here in Northeast uh, Houston, which is an older community, uh, which we look to be revitalizing because of the leadership that we have here. Um, but we're also in a community that can suffer um, at a higher level because of the economy uh, and because of the uh, impact uh, as relates to access. Uh, Linda Mae Johnson is in this part of the community. Their ICUs are full. Their hospital beds are full. Uh, it is a, a challenge uh, for there to be access to medical care here for someone who has a heart attack, uh, been in a car accident, and that's what the community needs to understand. When you're in a bed, we're going to have you in the bed, but you've got COVID-19, whether you're at the medical center or you're at uh, LBJ or Ben Tom, or you're out at UMCC or you're out in satellite hospitals, you most likely, because your time there is going to be long, you are going to have it be very difficult for others to get health care and access. Secondarily, if you happen to be exposed to COVID-19, the Delta variant, which is very infectious and gets sick, it is most likely for you to come out of the hospital if you're vaccinated. And let me say, these are rare occasions. 
most vaccinated persons can be able to fight it. But if you are sick and vaccinated, you might get out. In fact, you'll get out. That's what we have found. But those persons who are strong, those persons who are believe that they are athletes, or they are rappers, or they are young, or they are robots and not vaccinated, for some reason or other, Delta variant does not care. It does not care how good looking, how robust, how diverse you are, what your profession is, how you've been running or walking or exercising, it will kill you because you are not vaccinated. And as I'm not a doctor, but I've lived around it, your lungs turn white, you cannot breathe, and the ventilator cannot help you. And then science has not yet told us the long-term effects of having COVID. And as Dr. Beal said, and as Dr. Barone and Dr. Beal has said, what is happening to these children? That they lose someone close to them. And the 27-year-old might have had younger brothers and sisters. Oh my goodness, he had three children. Three children. Can Houston understand where we're at? Can, and, and this is across racial lines. I'm in Northeast Houston. It's got all kinds of people living in Northeast Houston. I represent everyone. And we're having problems with everybody, no matter what their background is. They are just not paying attention. So um, you've got devastation in Louisiana, just deviating for a moment. You've got close to 500,000 more, but there are people walking the streets with nothing. You've got people in the Northeast that just never experienced this. They stand outside their house just asking for any measure of help. If COVID starts getting in these groups that are not vaccinated, that's another surge because of the pandemic mixed with the devastation of no place to live, but only shelters. We are praying for the hurricane season here to pass us by. But if by chance there's some measure of it, some of our friends and relatives will be in shelters. Just imagine, unvaccinated. So I do believe with these numbers, we'll have to reach a moment of making a very difficult decision of mandates in hard to serve areas, or surging areas, excuse me, tied to federal funds. Uh, it is provocative, I understand it, but what is our next step? We have begged, we have paid, uh, we have opened, we have gone to schools, and that's where I'm gonna start going now, to the actual schools during the week and on Saturday, so that I can help these parents, maybe they're working, get these 12 and above vaccinated, and once we get the other vaccination for 12 and under. The little children will take it. The little children will wear masks, just watch them. They're obedient. Mm -hmm. They will do as you told them. Right. So, we thank you all for being here. I wanna make sure that I let uh, Keith Downey and, uh, where's my friend? Oh, yeah, both of you come. So, um, would you just come from the community very quickly, please? As they say in the church, would you come quickly? Oh. <laughs> come on, My name is Keith Downey. I'm super neighborhood president for Cashmere Garden. Everybody knows somebody who has either had COVID or knows somebody that knows somebody who had COVID or had COVID themselves. I have no right to say you don't love yourself, your children, and your healthcare workers, but you can love them better. You can show love and compassion. I don't want to put strain on healthcare workers. I've got the third vaccine now because I'm immune and compromised because I'm an asthmatic and the weather's starting to change. Because I don't want to wheeze at night. Because I don't want any respiratory illnesses. Because the seasons are changing. So lead by example. Our children, they follow what they see and they follow your words and what you say. And they'll raise their kids the same way. So we must get vaccinated. Three vaccines and I'm here to talk to you. So it doesn't kill you. It keeps you alive. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I can't say I've lost family members. In a matter of 30 days, we buried 
two robust young men oh, yes, in our yes. families. Mothers and grandmothers, I'm not just begging you for me. I'm begging you for your children. As we go into the schools and we look at their little faces, mm. it is terribly hard for them to recover from a year and a half of being homeschooled. But imagine the lifetime that they've got to endure without a parent or both parents and their grandparents. I beg you, my community, Northeast Houston, we work for you on every front. When we called out uh, to Congresswoman Lee last year and said, we have no testing. We had testing. Yes. We called out and said we have no vaccines. We have vaccines. There are no excuses. You've run out. So take this opportunity before you're in the hospital asking for a vaccine so that you can see your kids again. Take the vaccine now. Thank you. Thank you, Congresswoman. Thank you. So there is a myriad of things 
that we're expecting to be able to get helping small business, helping veterans, upgrading veterans of facilities, um, and providing emphasis on climate change. And the same thing with the infrastructure. We have a number of backlog infrastructure um, projects, particularly our bios, and you all know that a long overdue, the INVEST Act is going to invest in these bios down here, going to invest in ensuring uh, we're, we're going to be fighting for some dollars for that Ike Dike that you all have heard about, mm -hmm. so that we can be able to live in a place that we love. We don't want to move. Same thing that our poor brothers and sisters down in uh, the parishes that are now suffering. We've got to find a way to help them as well. We um, can't do it if we are still in September, October, November, and December of 2021 into 2022 dealing with COVID, mm -hmm. Delta, and Mu, mm -hmm. and people are not vaccinated. Mm -hmm. We just won't be able to turn the corner or turn the page. So I'm very glad to have you here, uh, and um, I, I don't want to move us to mandates, uh, but what is the solution, Gabriel, where we cannot get people to pay attention? Uh, so I want to thank Dr. Barone in his absence. He had to rush back to the hospital, rightly so. Uh, I want to thank Dr. Beal, council member, Pastor Morrison, Pastor Wilson, um, and of course our community leaders. Thank you so very much. You do great work out here. Call me again, and we'll be on the battlefield. I'm hoping that we might get through this season. We see what has happened in Louisiana, yeah. but we just need to be prepared. And I, I want to warn you that the season is not over. It goes all the way to November. Yeah. And so can you imagine you're not vaccinated and you, you're stormed out of your house and you're just somewhere where people are ex, uh, exposed or you're exposed or you're jammed up in a uh, convention center? Just imagine Hurricane Harvey. I lived down in the George R. Brown. Mm -hmm. If people, if COVID was there at that time, mm -hmm. somebody just said it would have been bad. Because we had people in there. We had people in NRG. We had people everywhere. Churches had people on the floor. Can you imagine? And so please, as has been said eloquently by Huey, my goodness, losing two wonderful young men and others. Get vaccinated. That's what I want to leave you with. Get vaccinated. We're on these planes, these sardine planes, and I'm just praying Try to get a, a sip or drink or something. I'm just trying to say, oh, Lord, let's hope that I can sip this drink and get out and I have something to go right by and know. Because yeah. I've got to be the one flying back and forth. And I'm in a sardine can, <laughs> no disrespect to flying. And you got to take off your mask. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. Just to try to get a sip of water. <laughs> Who would have ever thought? Everybody's trying to huddle down to make sure they're like this. What kind of lifestyle is that? Is there somebody listening? Do we want our college students on campus? What kind of lifestyle is that? They need to be all vaccinated. There should be one college student not vaccinated. You're all in dorms and in classes because you're not, most of you are coming back now. Because everybody's coming back. This is the week that everybody's come back across America. And that is why this surge is coming up because these little kids are coming back and they are infected. So with that in mind, I want to thank you all for coming. Um, I need to thank you. Uh, I, I certainly don't mind trying to be a help, a, a, a armor bearer for my constituents mm -hmm. um, as I'm dealing with the situation right now. But the point is, is that I'd much rather be talking about the houses being built, the great work that we're trying to do with the mayor of the city of Houston and his leadership, federal funds coming, people being out and about in beautiful weather like this, and not families hovering at the door of a hospital because they simply cannot get in because of the protocols that are necessary to protect the nurses and others, and you're just outside the door. We saw those pictures, people outside the window begging to see a loved one. Please understand that. So thank you very much, my final words. And let me thank you, MC, for always being there when we call uh, at our schools and elsewhere. Our new vaccine person is last name? Lopez. Oh, we're so happy for Ms. Lopez. Thank you.
they are. And if you could spread the word, okay? Thank you all very much. Applaud yourselves. Thank you. Thank you to the commander. Thank you to Noam East. A great idea. Thank you, Officer Miles. Thank you all so very much. A great team. And Congresswoman, I want, when you go to Congressman Meeks in Queens, yeah. tell him from an uh, ex Brooklyn Queens uh, president, but also all of us in the room are friends of Queens, Brooklyn, Manhattan, and the Bronx.